Good morning. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. So as we begin our worship today, we begin with just a prayer before our worship, which is on slide four, Devin. Together. Jesus, when we stand fearful and hesitant at the threshold of change, steady us with your presence. Then speak our name and call us onwards into new possibilities. Amen. And as just a reminder, we are the First United Church of Christ in Richmond, and I welcome you this Easter morning for our worship, and know that no matter where you are on your faith journey, you are always welcome here. And if you're just brand new to the whole idea of who Jesus is, you are most welcome here, because we are a come-as-you-are church. We are a priesthood of all believers, united and uniting in love. We believe that God is still speaking. So thank you for joining us on this journey. And for those of you at home, our, all our internet people, please, if you have a candle in your worship space, light it at this time. And the ringing of our bell. The only thing that's light about this day is the fact that there was an empty tomb. It's our call to worship. Jesus Christ is risen today. Hallelujah. Our triumphant and holy day. Hallelujah. Praise our God, ye heavenly hosts. Hallelujah. And please stand for Christ the Lord is risen today. prayer for illumination before the readings. Savior God, we, we, need your goodness. we need the challenge of your Holy Spirit. We need this time of word and worship. 
Help us to tune our hearts and minds to your will and your way as we approach the scriptures today. And I invite Hope to come forward for our first reading. Good morning. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Our first reading is from uh, the prophet Isaiah, chapter 65, verses 17 through 25. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and the one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat of their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 19 through 26. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom of God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Please stand.
Those that are able remain standing and we will together read the gospel. Early, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken my Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their home. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and she wept. She bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and the other at the feet. He said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes I think it's important for other than the pastor to be reading the gospel reading because sometimes you hear things when you're saying it out loud that you haven't noticed before. So in the reading today, we know that it's from the Gospel of John, which of course is a little bit different than the, gospel, the synoptic gospels because in the Gospel of John, the song that we sang before the gospel said it all. She came at night when it was still dark. She came to the tomb and she saw that the stone had been rolled away. And we know that after darkness comes the dawn. And so as you read the story and listen to it, know that Mary is there in the Gospel of John and she is the one who is sent meaning apostle, she is sent to the other ones to tell them the story of the resurrection. 
So let me just go down to memory lane a little bit. Just think, if you had a lifetime trip and it was going all around the Mediterranean area with all the stops in France and Greece and Turkey and Israel and Egypt and Italy and all over Italy you toured Sicily and Florence and Pompeii and Venice and finally Rome. Maybe you got to Rome on this day. What an itinerary, itinerary that would be. And any person who takes that kind of fabulous trip dreams about it for years and then spends months studying maps and travel brochures. It deserves very careful preparation when you're going on a lifetime trip and no detail is overlooked. And then comes the trip itself and you have all those weeks of guided tours, you're on the bus up and down hearing lectures, all kinds of stuff about the travel. And then finally, you're so tired, you're glad to go home. So whether you have experienced that kind of trip yourself, or you know of other people who have had that kind of trip, and maybe it was a close family member, and you know all about their fantastic journey, because maybe it was not, not necessarily to the so-called Holy Land, but other places in Europe, Alaska, Asia, Africa, maybe even Australia. Here's the question. How many of you have visited with a friend after their return from the trip, only to find yourself trapped for a long evening as they show you their picture albums, their PowerPoint, their slideshows, and they tell you endlessly about their trip? Everybody knows how, to, how that goes. When somebody gets out their phone and goes, look, 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 look. And do you remember how excited they were as they told you all about what had happened to them because of the, the trip, the pictures, the souvenirs? And yes, they could drive us crazy because they could go on for hours and hours. But you may, might have been wondering, as they were going through their iPhone, were they actually enjoying the trip a little bit more now than they actually did at the time of the trip? I know myself, sometimes I'm guilty that I'm so busy taking pictures that I'm missing some of what the person is saying about the place because I'm so busy taking pictures. And so I do relive it when I'm showing other people about the trip. And if you think they're sometimes enjoying it more as they show you their pictures, yes, sometimes in retrospect, we enjoy and understand things a little bit more. So there are three ways of knowledge. First, we learn by rehearsal before we actually do it. We prepare. Second, we learn by actually experiencing firsthand in real time. And third, we learn by reflecting back on what we have experienced. And in those three ways, it is in the remembrance that most of us learn best. For in memory, the learning process is not encumbered by the anxiety and anticipation of worry or by the exhaustion and the distraction of the actual event itself. In our memory, we step from behind the camera and slow down to take in those great moments. And that's how our lesson in the gospel shows the experience of Easter. It was the learned truth in all those three ways. First, the original witness or witnesses to Easter learned by preparation and rehearsal. When Mary and John and the women in the gospel of Luke found it empty, the tomb, they, they were afraid and uncertain of what this might mean. They did not seem to expect the resurrection at all. But the two angels reminded them that Jesus had taught them from the scriptures, and he told them he would suffer and die on a cross and then rise from the dead. In fact, the gospel accounts tell us that Jesus repeated this lesson several times in the company of all of the disciples, not only the 12. 
So why didn't they anticipate the resurrection? They were told several times about it. Well, most of us learn very little while we are preparing for an event. When we are learning to drive, our parents try to explain the rules of the road and the dangers of the car, but what teenager is listening, really listening? At the time, he or she is just thinking, yeah, 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 just give me the keys. And later, after some experience, maybe, maybe a couple tickets. After some experience, they, in retrospect, say, oh, yeah, Dad was trying to tell me about that all along. I can't have a heavy foot on the pedal. And it starts to sink in. And sometimes the lessons that our parents teach us, they don't get to experience that we actually got it. Because sometimes it's after they're gone from us that we say, oh, yeah, remember when Dad used to always say that? Mom used to always tell me that, but you start to pay attention in retrospect. So Jesus taught his disciples about the resurrection, but at the time of preparation, their minds were cluttered with all the other distractions. After all, they were living under Roman occupation. And like them, we do not learn that much in preparation. But we do learn something, and it kind of gets stored away in our head, and later, it's the gentle and the wise hands of memory that retrieve those insights from the dusty shelves of our minds. And second, the witness of Easter and the witnesses learned about the actual resurrection by the experience at the empty tomb. Again, the women and Mary did not fully appreciate or understand what they were experiencing, but the empty tomb and the message of the angels was certainly a remarkable experience. In fact, the resurrection of Jesus overturned all of their previous knowledge about life and death. It was just too much to take in all at once. So they ran, tumbling with joy and doubt, to tell the others. And if despair drives us into, into individual silence, celebration connects the community. The resurrection of Jesus was too good to be true, but it was also too good to keep to themselves. And finally, the witnesses to Easter truly learned its joyous truth through the different lens, the lens of memory and reflection. The angels called the women to remember the words Jesus had told them. And when they did, when those words came drifting back into their minds, then and only then did Easter begin to make sense. It would happen the same way for Peter and the others. And their first experience of Easter only brought them wonder and doubt. But when they had the time to recall the words of Jesus and to think about it again and all that he had said, the puzzles kind of came together. So we gather here thousands of years later on yet another Easter morning how can we really know the risen Christ? We cannot discover the empty tomb. We do not have the appearances of the angels, but we have the reassuring words of the gospel for us. And Luke wrote to a generation of the church that had to hear the stories just like us, secondhand. And here is the secret of experiencing Easter. It was not the empty tomb or even the angels that led the first Christians to faith in the risen Christ. It was in the remembering of his words in the context of community as the church gathered. So, Easter people, all of you, 
You are at no disadvantage at all these 2,000 years later. Just remember the scriptures. Come to the table of the Lord, and right here, right here, you will experience the risen Christ for yourself. And the people said, So we, as we gathered on this day, usually we do the renewal of the baptismal promises, uh, but we would just do the creed instead um, together. I believe. Third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And on this Easter, when Christ is risen indeed, we remember all of the people who are in need of prayers, especially today. I am offering prayers for Bobby and peace of heart as he has surgery tomorrow. Uh, Sandy Knoll also goes in to have surgery tomorrow. And I want to lift up prayers for the, the family of Renee Starnes. She was buried yesterday and also for the family of Adam Markey. We join Christians everywhere today in prayer for the salvation of the world. Let us pray. For those places where the risen Jesus is proclaimed amidst violence. For those who celebrate Easter in nations of war, for those whose faith in the risen Christ is a proclamation of light in their dark world, we pray. The response is, risen Lord, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For those places where the risen Jesus is proclaimed amidst suffering, for those who celebrate Easter in hospitals, in nursing homes, in prison or in the grip of drug abuse, alcoholism, and mental illness, for those whose faith in the risen Christ proclaims light in the dark world, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For those places where the risen Jesus is proclaimed amidst poverty, for those who celebrate Easter, without food or shelter or someone to care for them in their infirmity, and for those who celebrate Easter hoping for a better world, for those whose faith in the risen Christ is a proclamation of light in their dark world, we pray. Risen Lord. And for all of those who have died in the last couple years of this pandemic, whether they died from the virus, doesn't matter. They are gone from us. We lift up those who are mourning their passing. And for those who celebrate Easter with their faith realized in that the world where there is no darkness, only light will come to be, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. And for this community of faith where the risen Jesus is proclaimed amidst all cares, worries, and anxiety, for each person here confident in the light of Jesus, may Jesus rise in each of us, we pray. Risen Lord. 
Hear our prayers, O God, and bring each of us and all our concerns to the fulfillment your love intends. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And the other prayers include, the heavens and earth rejoice. God has raised Jesus from the dead and promised us everlasting life. Nothing can separate us from God's love in Jesus Christ. We praise you, O Holy One. We adore you. We celebrate our new life in Christ. Hear these prayers of your people for the power of resurrection to transform us and set us free. In your mercy, resurrect us, O God, from pandemic exhaustion and anxiety, resignations, political decisions, gaslighting, and cultural worlds. In your mercy. From our tendencies to hoard and consume without thought of neighbor or planet, from our need to satisfy every craving, from our habit of stuffing ourselves beyond what is healthy or necessary. From our thirst for violence, our rationalization of revenge, our disbelief in peace as a pragmatic path. From all that lays waste to our souls, all the message that we are unworthy and incapable of becoming the people you created us to be, denying the imagio deo that sparks within. From doubts and depression, from hopeless despair, from overwhelming grief. From the social evils that plague us, the injustice of poverty, racism, transphobia, homophobia, xenophobia, all the phobias and isms of the world. In your mercy, resurrect us, O God. Living Christ, we praise you for opening the gates of everlasting life and making us through the wilderness to this glorious day of hope. We are not lost. We are not And at this time, I just want to thank all of those who continue to participate monetarily to our mission here at the church. And I know that sometimes people are uncomfortable with online giving. Our address is listed. If some people would like to donate by snail mail, I personally like snail mail still. I like being able to hold something in my hand. And just know that all of your gifts in any amount are appreciated. You know, we now use cameras, new mics, different lighting. All of it is to improve our online presence for you. And now for our doxology, please stand if you can. Together, let us pray the prayer over all the dedication of anything that comes in from wherever. God, you meet our needs and transform us for service. 
Accept these gifts as tokens of our gratitude and bless Christ's ministry with these offerings. Amen. And you can sit for the next song. Um, the melody is a little bit familiar and certainly the young people will know it's from Beauty and the Beast. So it's the same song we did last Sunday and Monday, Thursday. Come share the Lord. It's in the chalice hymnal. Good thing Christ resurrected. Peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God Most High. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We praise the Father for Christ's birth, life, death, and resurrection, and for calling forth of your church for its mission in the world. We offer ourselves to you as we unite our voices with the entire family of your faithful people everywhere. Together. Holy. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of Hosanna in the highest. Consecrate by your spirit these gifts, of bread and wine, and bless us that as we receive them, we may offer you our faith and praise. May we be united with Christ and with one another. May we continue faithful in all things. Together, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen.
The table is yours, God. It's not mine. It's not a denomination's. It's not for anyone to decide who can participate. Always, the grace of God puts our past behind, moves past our fears, and forgives our indiscretions. All are invited to participate. And I ask those who are going to share it, pass the bread along to come forward. There's bread on two trays, it'll just come and you, and if you prefer to have the individual cups that are packaged, uh, more sanity, more sanity, safety, <laughs> um, feel free if you feel more comfortable with that, I, we certainly understand. Everybody is welcome to receive. There's no age requirement, no spotlessness required. As a little kid once said, when I take that bread and take it into me, it makes me feel like Jesus is right there with me. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took the bread, broke it, gave thanks, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Eat this, for it is the body of Christ broken for you.
And in the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Drink this, for it is the blood of Christ shed for you. In our short prayer after receiving together, our Savior. to everlasting life. Remember, Jesus loved his disciples through their imperfections. Knowing that they would desert him and betray him, he still shared the bread in the cup. Remember me, said Jesus the Christ, upon his blessings of cup and bread. And we have remembered, and our participation has graced us with the ability to live the life Jesus taught. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Leave this worship space as a resurrected people living into the hope of the gospel's good news. We stand for because he lives. the grace, hope, and peace, and love of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be with you now and always. Amen. Blessings of Easter be upon all of you and your families and everybody you encounter. Make it a great and glorious day. Go in peace.